Looking at what is happening now, a lot of people don't understand what is going on in Nigeria. A lot of people still believe in the, uh, of course, they still believe somehow in Nigeria, you know, they believe that the structure, the political structure of Nigeria is the major problem. And we, people following you, have a different view and a different opinion to this. And I think this is where the interest is clashing. Anybody that is shouting for Nigeria today believe that the problem is in the political structure. We are believing that the problem is not about political structure, but rather there is a motivated or there is a premeditated uh, act to take our land and turn it into Islamic State of, of Lanizos. So we are not looking at the aspect of the political structure anymore. It is a, a, a struggle for survival of our people. I want you to shed more light on this because, you know, those supporting one Nigeria must have reason. And the reason what we have seen is that they are thinking that the political structure of Nigeria is the problem of Nigeria. So can you tell us more about, you know, that it is not the political structure, rather something they should know about? Um, thank you, Sam. And it's something they know about that pretend not to know about it. Everybody knows about the hegemonic tendencies of the Fulani Caliphate. We are well versed in the, should I call it shenanigans, of those people who are always expanding. There was a lecture that I gave that the Fulanis are the only people that continues to expand. Not expand in terms of population, but in terms of territorial influence and supplanting existing cultures and traditions with their own. When we say this thing, people say, oh, you're, uh, you're warmongering, you're, you're, you're profiling, and it is, it is hate and all the rest of it. And I say this is pure nonsense. Look at the history of the Hausa people. Those of you that want one Nigeria, look at what is happening today in Kanyan Bruno, the place we call Bruno State. Look at the fate of those of them in the Middle Belt. Look at the fate of those of them, our brothers and sisters in Yoruba land, Yoruba. Even the Caliphate left their footprints there many, many years ago in Kwara State. Many years ago, they overran Nupe people of Niger State. Many years ago, some of you don't know this, they forcibly they forcibly tried to convert the act of a Gala to Islam. These things are there in our history books. They are everywhere. If one Nigeria means that our land should be surrendered to people from Senegambia, then death is a better option because it's not going to happen. We are the Biafran people, and within that Biafra, it contains a very unique race in the world called the Igbo race. Very, they are very difficult, don't get me wrong, but they are very unique. Very, very unique. I don't think anybody is more stubborn than we are. I don't think anybody is more generous than we are. I do not believe that any race on this earth is more affluent in terms of natural blessing than we are. Anybody thinking they can use the guise of one Nigeria to take the land of our ancestors, that person is dreaming. Them and their cohorts, they are dreaming. And I will tell you why they are dreaming. They have tried before, over 300 years ago, to take that very land. They failed. Islam made it to the sea across West Africa. Islam made it to the Atlantic Ocean. The only place that Islam did not succeed in penetrating is the East. And when they came for that very jihad, we, did, we had no army at all. God Almighty in heaven took over the them and put them in the fort for us. All their armies died. That thing they tried in Kwara State and succeeded, they tried it in Lower Benue, in Idoma and the Lands, and they failed. All their armies died. The few that survived, they trekked back to Zaria from whence they came. 
I must warn anybody. All of these people agitating or saying, oh, we want one Nigeria. You are setting up yourselves to fail. You are as foolish as Hausa peasants. Hausa peasants did the same thing you're doing. Oh, allow them. Give them land. Give them cattle. By the time they woke up, all their kings were dead. Hausa kingdoms became colony emirates. We are, if you have Hausa governors, you have Fulani governors. Telling you we are Hausa Fulani, we are Hausa Fulani. And I, I keep asking myself, why is it that people don't see all these things? Is it because, of course, that is why we call them a zoo, because they are very foolish. Without apologies to anyone. Because if you are not foolish, history is there for you to reference. These people asking you for land, asking you for room that maintain peace, let's stay in one Nigeria. What are their antecedents? What have they done in the past? Because when we come from Manasseh, from their behavior in the past, you now know if you can trust them or not. But it's Britain that is behind the scenes, remoting everything that's happening in this. I am a British citizen. I hold a British passport. I know there are good men and women in England. It is a land of conscience. It was English people that left Southampton to come to America to build America the land of the free. English people, yes. They traveled on a ship called Mary Rose. They landed at a place called New England. Conscientious, honorable, God-fearing people. They were the ones that held slaves to escape from the south to the north. English people. But that is a breed we have now. Blood-sucking demons. Their job is to hold Africa down. To hold a black person down. And how are they doing it? They don't want you to tamper with any of their creations in Africa. All these idiotic states, all these artificial boundaries they gave us in Africa. No, because that is the beginning of the chain that is holding us down. And they know it. And the question is, who is a Nigerian? And I will ask you a simple, I want you to contemplate something, Simon, for me. No, I ask you now to go and prepare a Nigerian dish for me. What are you going to present? Because if you bring a wedu soup, somebody from the East will tell you that is not their food. They are not going to eat it. If you bring alpha or a big item, somebody from Kanye State will tell you that is not our food. If you bring to war, is it to war, shikafi or whatever they call it, Somebody from the middle class will say that is not your food. Ordinary food that is no commonality. Is it the way they dress? So I keep asking myself every blessed day when I wake up, what is it that unites Nigeria together? And then I discovered it is two things. An innate desire to be corrupt. And secondly, stupidity. Those two things are very, very pivotal. They are the things driving the zoo. People talk about their founding fathers. When the Fulanese are talking, they say, our founding fathers. And I keep asking them, Nigeria, your president, so-called, the dead Buhari, is older than the country. And where else in the world do you have a head of state that is actually older than the country in the 21st century? So, show, tell, tell me one place. Only in Africa. Because they came to Africa and they built all these contraptions and now we, in our idiocy and stupidity as black people, we accepted it. As I keep asking all the time, can you go to Europe to build a country for them? They will hang you that same day. If you cannot do the same thing in Europe that Europeans did in Africa, then why are you accepting it? Why are you accepting it? The key thing here is the way we reason. That is the problem with the black man, how we reason. People talk about Nigeria as their country, talk about Nigeria as their nation, as if Nigeria has any legs to stand on in the first place. Nigeria is, it has no meaning. It is a very derisory meaning. It means something very terrible and very awful. If I ask in Yoruba language, tell me the name of Nigeria, you cannot tell me. 
If I go to Igbo language, tell me the meaning of Nigeria, you cannot tell me. But I know the meaning of England. It's the land of the English people. I know the meaning of France, or is the land of the French people. It's only in Africa that you have all this garbage. And we are, after our university, after our so called PhD, FFD, SSD, come on to reason like a human being, we cannot. Those are the things we are fighting. And those are the things that our detractors are very, very uncomfortable with. And that is why today you must pat yourself on the back and every IPOB member for that matter, for the very simple reason. At last, people are beginning to reason with you. All thanks to what we are doing. So don't mind them. When they go back into the privacy of their homes, they consider what we are saying is right. But outwardly, due to economic, political, or whatever thing that it is, they wish to throw the line of uh, let's keep Nigeria warm. We are not fighting with anybody. All we are asking them to do is to reason for once in their useless lives to be able to. Let's insult them. When would, if it's an idiot, why won't I insult you? Mm. If, if, I'm asking, go to a white man's land and tell them you want to create a country in Europe. That day they will roast you alive. They will, in fact, they will first of all inject you. They'll say you are not well in the brain. They came to our land, they divided Yoruba into three. Some Yoruba is in Togo, some Yoruba is in Benin Republic, some are in the zoo. You're telling me that a Yoruba man who is in Nigeria is more related to a Kanudi man who is in Bruno, more than his own brother in the other side of Paragre, in Porto Novo, in Benin Republic. They speak the same language, wear the same clothes, do eat the same food, everything is the same. But a white man, now we have French Yoruba, those who are in the Benin Republic and uh, in Togo. We now have English Yoruba who are in Nigeria. What type of God made us? And let me give you an example before I conclude on this very point. Simon, is this. Do you know that Togo used to belong to Germany before? Togo, they were, in, they were Germans before. After the Second World War, they used Togo to compensate France because Germany lost the war. And these are human beings in Africa, for Christ's sake. I can't understand this type of nonsense. I can't understand it. And that is why I keep saying that the, the one of the greatest you know, disasters to befall me in life is to come from Africa. We are people who do not reason. How can you have the same people? One part is French, the other part is English. It's English and uh, it's Yoruba and the French. Are they the same people? The answer is no. And you're telling me that a Yoruba man inside Nigeria should be related to with somebody in in in, in Brown State. She never Lord have mercy. Thank you very much, please.